<laughs> Welcome. Let us observe the sun. Up first, is a look at the solar pressure for today, on this Geospace Magnetosphere movies display, and it shows the pressure is moderately low thus far. Also, on this geoelectric field map, for today which measures the induction hazard to artificial conductors, such as electrical power lines, this is used to estimate the amount of current induced by integrating along the conducting pathway, today it's showing in the very low megavolts per kilometer. Shown, on this solar flare, classification chart for the last three days, the flare activity has been consistently active, but all have been in the C-class range, below the M-class zones. Using the SEEDS filters, the CME activity can be observed, over the last two days thus far. Note, in this area, there looks to be a bubbling effect. On this model the CME from the 22nd is mapped, and Mercury, BEPI, and Stereo B, satellites, along with Earth get a light dose of radiation and solar wind. Here's a look at the CME activity on the Stereo A Core 2 filter. Note, the stereo A filter is always behind a few days, thus, the 20th through the 21st is shown. On this split screen, showing May 2019, and on the right May 2022, the ramped up solar activity can plainly be observed. Did a cold interstellar cloud, hit the solar system? A new research paper by Marav Ofer, Boston University, and Abraham Loeb, Harvard University, suggests that a cold interstellar cloud of gas hit the solar system two million years ago. The impact compressed the heliosphere, making it much smaller than Earth's orbit. Our planet was completely exposed to interstellar space and a blizzard of galactic cosmic rays. If this really happened, it would have altered space weather, terrestrial climate, and possibly even human evolution. For the lunar observers. The moon is in the waning crescent phase, illumination, 32%. This is the position of the planets today. And as always, sit back, relax, and let me keep my eye on the sun for you.